This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on this Sunday. I'm Tim Gordon. Well, it's going to be a rough go outside with wildfires bringing smoke into Oregon, making for hazardous air quality across the state. So let's get right to Ashley Grahams for a quick look at the forecast, including some air quality concerns, Ashley. Good morning, Tim. Good to be waking up with you on this Sunday. Let's take a look outside right now. And yes, you can already see all this smoke and haze pretty heavy here uh, in downtown Portland, and it's just going to be like this uh, for the next day or so. So uh, it's probably going to get worse here in the next couple hours, at least here in the metro area right now, uh, about 63 degrees outside, so a little bit warmer than we saw yesterday morning. But let's take a look around uh, the metro area of Vancouver 59, Troutdale 56, 60 in Aurora. And as we take a look across the state, 40s on the coast, 55 in Pendleton, 58 in Joseph, 62 in Roseburg, 54 in Eugene. So lots of these areas seeing the same smoke and haze that we're seeing here in Vancouver and in Portland, although a little bit worse in the Dalles and uh, headed out that way. Going to be in kind of the unhealthy category when it comes to air quality. But here in Portland, uh, we are still in that moderate category. We're and continue to monitor that for you right now. As we said, 63 degrees, but we are going to pop up into the 80s and then later into the 90s. So going to be a beautiful hot day, but we're going to continue to track that smoke. We'll look at a map coming up. All right, thanks a lot, Ashley. And let's talk about the source of all that smoke now. Wildfire officials in the Northwest are on high alert as multiple large fires strain resources. The entire region has moved to the highest preparedness level possible. That's level five. That means there's significant fire activity and the need for help from other parts of the country. Each marker on this map represents fire activity. The larger the dot, the bigger the fire. Thankfully, we're not seeing the most serious fires in our area. Washington Governor Jay Inslee has declared a state of emergency to get more help for crews battling three wildfires in the eastern part of the state. Two have done major damage. Those are the Oregon Road Fire near the town of Elk, northeast of Spokane. It's burned two dozen structures and has forced thousands to evacuate. The bigger fire, the Gray Fire, is near Medical Lake, southwest of Spokane. One person has died in that fire. It's also burned nearly 200 structures, many of them homes. The sheriff of Spokane County worries more victims may be discovered. It is incredible the destruction that occurred in these residential neighborhoods and how quickly that fire overtook that community. Oh, the Gray Fire is still 0% contained. It's estimated to be just under 10,000 acres this morning. Well, in Oregon, the lookout fire burning in the Willamette National Forest in Lane County appears to be the most active fire in the state right now. Updated numbers show 8,600 acres have burned with no containment yet. It's caused the closure of some popular recreation areas. That includes uh, Blue Lake now, Blue Pool now, I should say, also known as Tamalich Falls, well, as well as uh, Saheli Falls area. That closure will be in effect for the next month unless conditions change. And we're turning to Hawaii now, where search crews have gone over roughly 80% of the burn zone in Maui, looking for victims of last week's wildfire. 114 people have been confirmed dead. It's a number still expected to rise, with hundreds more considered missing. Well, a tourist visiting Maui from Issaquah, Washington, survived the fire by jumping in a swimming pool. They stayed there for three hours, watching the flames spread all around them. Julie Calhoun shares her harrowing story. Christina Lee Garrido, back to her life at home and work in Issaquah. Still processing surviving last week's deadly fire that decimated Lahaina. It was definitely a surreal experience. Lee Garrido and her best friend were visiting the island on vacation. Last Tuesday, they were in their condo because of power outages from Hurricane Dora. That's when thick black smoke filled their room and they had to escape. It was definitely not what we expected when we opened the door. We didn't know where the fire was. That was the biggest issue. And since there was no early warning, it seemed like it was all around us. They knew how to find the pool and had no other choice than to get in for survival. It was a raging wildfire. We had an inferno in the pool with us. We were picking things out of our skin at the time and had ash all in our eyes and our ears. They had no cell service and Lee Garrido says the SOS feature on their friend's iPhone saved their lives. It was able to connect them 
to EMS. They told us not to move. We will ping you with the satellite, and they did every 15 minutes. They stayed in the pool for three hours while fires raged around them. Around 8 p.m., three firefighters would rescue them and soon learned the rest of the town was engulfed. They drove through fire for us, and um, I saw houses on fire. We went through fences. We went over embankments. In the rearview mirror, I thought I could see one of the tires on fire. Lee Garrido was then taken to a shelter, and it wouldn't be until she got home Saturday that she saw the scope of what she survived. That was when I realized that I almost died, that I almost was incinerated, was when I got home and I looked at the news. And thankful to be home and alive. Very, very fortunate and that there are angels among us. There's four of them on Maui that I would love to thank someday with some kind of medal. Wow, what a story. Well, we have new details following this past week's heat wave. Two more people are suspected to have died in Multnomah County. The county medical examiner announced the fifth and sixth suspected heat related deaths on Saturday. One person was found in Northeast Portland, another in North Portland. It's not clear exactly when they died and we don't yet know any other details about them. Well, a popular food cart location in Southeast Portland is now closed. Carts on Foster is the same spot where one cart owner was attacked back in June in what authorities later said was a hate crime. Thomas Schultz has more on the move neighbors call a big blow. You know, you get used to seeing it. It just, it still hurts every time. Just a few weeks ago, this was a popular spot filled with food carts and picnic tables. Now all that's left is overturned bushes, an abandoned grill, and three empty carts. I don't know. Kind of feels like the beginning of the end. The end, at least, yeah. of a gathering spot. Yeah, I'm a little upset, but you know, it obviously must not be a great location. There's one door Harris will miss most. There was a place called Laurel's Chicken from Chicago. A couple months ago, Darrell Preston, the owner of Laurel's Chicken Shack, was attacked outside the pod. His lawyer says a white man yelled racial slurs at him and beat him. Laurel's has since moved to the Rose City Food Park. He's not the only neighbor that will be missed. Ed's Fish House. Yeah, I've been going to him for like 12, 15 years. Ed McGregor hauled the year of the fish to Southeast 82nd Avenue. The pod is like a neighborhood. A neighborhood that got a quick eviction. He had three weeks of notice that the property owners weren't renewing the lease. Others didn't even get that. We had no notice whatsoever. Al Kafaji says she lost money and food when courts on Foster closed. It was only when picnic tables started to be cleared away she realized something was up. It was really hard because we were very surprised at Foster. We did not know that we were that they were closing. The shawarma station told their friends at Monster Mac about an open spot downtown. The two got a couple spots across from each other at the Midtown Beer Garden. While the courts are settling in, meeting new neighbors, silence haunts this empty Foster lot. It's hard to tell with an area like this what will happen. And it's too bad. While the quick moves were frustrating, food cart owners did acknowledge that the southeast neighborhood just wasn't safe. Neighbors hope something changes and the area is revitalized soon.